Hello again, everybody. My name is Paula, and welcome to Nurse Says. I'm a year three nursing student at the National University of Singapore, and you are at the second part of the series about NUS nursing, the admissions process, curriculum, and all these. Today, we are going to be talking about the clinical hospital postings that we have as NUS nursing students. I'm going to tell you what it's all about, what we do there, and where we go. Okay, let's begin. What are these postings? Basically, for NUS nursing, half of every single holiday that we have in school is dedicated to these hospital postings. So for example, the year begins in August and then we have a one-month break in December. So two weeks of that one-month break will be spent in the hospitals. For May to July holidays, since we have three months holidays, one and a half months of that three months will be spent in the hospitals. What's so good about these postings is it follows what you are learning as an NUS nursing student. What do I mean? For example, in year one semester one, you learn about the basics of nursing, what you have to do as a junior nurse, for example, and hence after year one semester one, you are gonna go to a community hospital for your posting. So you're gonna spend two weeks there in order to do the basic things that nurses have to do um, for community hospitals posting since you don't really have a lot of nursing skills yet what you will have to do would be the very basic things that all nurses must do which is changing diapers bathing patients um, taking their blood pressure taking their temperature um, feeding more basic since it's a community hospital and the patients there are mostly elderly you have to help a lot with activities of daily living like eating bathing dressing moving things like that. Then we move on to year one, semester two. So for year one, semester two, you know, you learn anatomy, physiology, physical assessment, pathophysiology, pharmacology, nursing practice. You get to spend six weeks in a medical surgical ward, which is kind of like your first taste of what nursing really is in an acute hospital, for example. You can get to practice a lot of skills like wound dressing, medication and administration, also a lot of ADLs, how to give oxygen. Yeah, basically care as well. Year 2 semester 1, you learn mental health nursing, ethics and law, and then women and children health. During my year, women and children health was in year 2 SEM 2. After year 2 SEM 1, we went to IMH since we learned mental health nursing which is how you take care of patients with mental health conditions and you also learn the different mental health conditions and the care associated with each and every one of them. So we went to IMH for two weeks because it's the December break, right? We can't really do a lot of the nursing skills there because it's a very specialized area. So we were not allowed to give medications, even under supervision, no. But what I did take away from that mental health, uh, I really loved my IMH posting because I was posted to a mental health geriatric ward, which means it's those elderly with mental health conditions. And I really have a soft spot for elderly because I grew up with my grandparents in the house. Some of them, you know, have depression, some of them have schizophrenia, they have hallucinations, they can get very violent, um, but some of them are really, really very nice. For the IMH posting, the students mostly play with them, do activities with them, talk to them, and then practice like to do a mini mental state exam and basically just be their friend in those two weeks. Year 2, SEM 2, Infection and Immunology, Medical Sociology, Pathophysiology, Pharmacology, Nursing Practice, uh, Healthy Community Living. So like what I said just now, in year 2, SEM 2, I had my Women and Children Health module. So that's basically Obstetrics and Gynecology. And in year 2, SEM 2, you have seven weeks of clinical attachment. Before COVID, it used to be, I think, one week in obstetrics and gynecology, one week in pediatrics, one week in operating theater, and then four weeks in medical surgical ward for a total of seven weeks. But because of COVID, in my cohort, nobody was able to go for any of the specialized postings. So nobody was able to go for operating theater, pediatrics, and supposedly the whole cohort was not able to go for obstetrics and gynecology as well. But I'm in this particular hospital, and this particular hospital 
allowed students to be in the obstetrics and gynecology ward even though it was COVID season. Eight of us were able to go for obstetrics and gynecology. But for the rest of my cohort, because of COVID, sadly, we are not allowed to go for specialized areas. So, for example, for me, even though I've been to obstetrics and gynecology, I haven't been and I will never be posted to pediatrics or operating theater or emergency. Then we move on to year 3 SEM 1. Year 3 SEM 1 is kind of like your last studying semester if you are not taking honors. So it's leadership, management, public and community health. This palliative and end-of-life care is actually new. I did not have that module. I think it's very important to have this module and I am jealous that you guys will have that module. <laughs> and then PPNP3 and research. So for year 3 SEM 1, since the vacation will be in December, it's supposed to be two weeks. One week polyclinic, one week emergency department. But because of COVID, we weren't allowed to go to the ED, so we were only allowed to go to the polyclinic for one week. Then we go to year 3 SEM 2. So year 3 SEM 2, um, it says here that the latest curriculum, you won't have any module already except for T2P. T2P transition, <laughs> T2P transition to professional practice experience. That's basically 12 weeks of just being in the ward and functioning like a nurse. So they give you like your own patient, they assign you your own patients and you have to take care of those patients and you have to talk to the doctors and like give them medications and talk to the occupational therapists, physiotherapists, pharmacists, talk to the family members. Basically, you are like in charge of that patient under, of course, under supervision by the hospital staff. This will last 12 whole weeks during your year 3 SEM 2. Okay, then honors year. I'm currently in year 3. I haven't been through the honors program. So maybe I'll make another video when I'm... <laughs> when I finish my honors program but for now I'm not gonna talk about that because I have nothing to talk about. That's what um, the clinical posting will be like, the order. I'm sorry it's like so long-winded because I have so many stories to tell. Maybe I cut the stories already during the editing. Okay, since I'm so long-winded, let's do a recap on where you're gonna go. After year 1 SEM 1, 2 weeks in community hospital. After year 1 SEM 2, six weeks in a tertiary hospital in the medical surgical department. After year two SEM 1, it will be IMH for two weeks. After year two SEM 2, it will be all those different specialties, one week obstetrics gynecology, one week pediatrics, one week operating theater, and then four weeks of medical surgical. After year three SEM 1, one week of ED, and then one week of polyclinic. ED is emergency department. And then during year 3 SEM 2, it will be for oh I forgot to say this. You have four weeks of pre-T2P. So it's like medical surgical before your T2P from January to Feb. And then March to June, you will have the T2P for 12 weeks, medical medical surgical or whatever word. Then honors year clinicals will be I think nine weeks. I mean I haven't been to year four so I'm not quite sure but I think it's nine weeks during the second semester yep so that's about it guys so similar to the first video I'm gonna leave the Google form below if you have any more questions we will answer them on the 6th of March live session on the NUS nursing Instagram account as well as my Instagram account at nurses thank you guys